Good day, everyone. I'm Assistant Professor Rushad Mistry from the Mechanical Engineering Department, Valjan Institute of Technology, Sholapur. And for today's session, I'll be discussing on capacitive sensors. The learning outcome of this session is that the learner will be able to list types of capacitive sensors, explain principle of operation of capacitive sensors, and enumerate applications of these capacitive sensors. Now, in the previous class, we studied the measurement systems um, different types of sensor classification and also inductive sensors. So we continue from there and today we'll be discussing capacitive sensors or capacitive transducers. Now capacitive transducers uh, typically are based on the fact that there's a variation in capacitance between two separated electrodes is used for the measurement. Capacitance is, there, is thus a function of the effective area of the conductors, the separation between the conductors and the dielectric strength of the material. So a change in capacitance can thus be brought about by varying any one of the three parameters. That is, either you can change the distance between the two parallel electrodes, or by changing the dielectric constant, the permittivity, or the dielectric medium, or changing the area between the electrodes. So we'll look up all these three cases in a minute. So the ratio of the amount of charge stored on the plates to the amount of voltage across the capacitor is called the capacitance. And the capacitance is thus directly proportional to the area of plates, inversely proportional to the distance between and inversely proportional to the distance between them, given by the formula as given on the screen, measured in farads. Now, the three cases that we were discussing is you could alter the capacitance by uh, separating the two electrodes so by, uh, by altering D. So if you look at the formula and if you change D you get a curve typically which is like this. Since D is in the denominator the relation actually ends up being non-linear. Now the uh, another way would be actually to change the area. Now the formula actually is rewritten like this in terms of LW by D where area is given as in the in the form of L and W. So if you move the areas, if you move the plates across like this, you can effectively change the capacitance and this relation is very linear. Another way obviously would be to vary to change the dielectric. Now these different ways are used um, uh, by, by industry in, in, in different contexts and uh, best example actually would be the cell phone where the third option that is capacitance variation using change of dielectric is very widely used. Now some food for thought of all the three techniques which are discussed about which one do you think has a definitive advantage over the other? If you use it now you use a device which has a capacity sensor every day that is the cell phone I'll give you the hint. So what is actually the principle which is being basically used over here? You Now think of it, you use a device which has a capacity sensor and you use it every day. So what device is it? Now coming back to capacity sensors, what are the features of capacity sensor? Let's say vis-a-vis -vis some of the other sensors which you have discussed before. One thing is that they require extremely small forces to operate. They are very sensitive and require very low power to operate as well. Frequency response is quite good, up to 50 kilohertz, and they are very good candidates for applications involving dynamic measurements. So they can be used in accelerometers up to a certain obviously frequency range extensively. So this is one advantage capacitive sensors have over LVDTs, which have a very small application when it comes to dynamic measurement. So they offer extremely high resolution. Even uh, definitely more than potentiometric sensors and um, some some say in almost in parallel or sometimes exceeding L, uh, LVDT sensors. Uh, one more thing is you need to insulate metallic parts from each other. There is some loss of sensitivity to error sources associated with cable connecting. Uh, they are susceptible to moisture and other environmental factors. These are typically the negative features which have been attributed in most textbooks. Uh, these sensors are remarkably resistant to falls. This is one of the reasons you see your cell phone operates extremely well in different conditions, moisture, etc., even for a very long period of time. So, um, 
but depending upon the application and depending upon the construction impurities contamination dust um, usually don't have effect on them nor does electromagnetic induction now when it comes to features let me tell you uh, there may be a bit of contradiction in textbooks some of the older textbooks tend to indicate that capacitive sensors are uh, somehow not tolerant to impurities contamination which may be true at that time but things have changed and today if you actually look at features as advertised by the sensor manufacturers they tend to claim that their sensors especially capacitive sensors are quite tolerant to dust impurities moisture etc etc so we will go with the latest data when it comes to such applic uh, such features so what are the typical application then of uh, capacitive sensors now remember the applications overlap with lvdts and other sensors as well but they do have a certain niche when it comes to the applications the ability of capacitive sensors to detect virtually all materials makes them an attractive choice in many applications okay as it's basically used as secondary transducer in tactile sensors in force sensors in pressure sensors uh, take for example um, a pressure sensor involving a deflection of a diaph diaphragm where the displacement is measured by a capacitive sensor in in the, the the diaphragm actually being the primary transducer and the capacitive sensor obviously being the secondary transducer they are extensively used in track pads and touch screens in almost every tablet the cell phone or even laptop screen they are almost always capacitive sensors other applications typically are proximity sensors in level and in feed monitoring um, uh, they are used in paper wood uh, uh, granules or liquids to detect the status of the product during the production process and final inspection so again these applications have been compiled from various sources this is in addition to the tra traditional displacement sensing under which these sensors are grouped now um, one application is actually in very high precision measurement where capacitive sensors has been used physics instrument is a very renowned manufacturer of high tech um, uh, precision instrument involving nano scale measurements and this is where i found one application of capacitive sensors especially for nano as nano sensors for nano measurements the picture will also give you an idea of how these sensors look and how they are packaged um again if you take a look at some very general applications of capacitive sensors are like i said um in position measurement displacement measurement in measurement of thickness of plates in several applications including rolling mills etc etc uh, to measure run out and eccentricity which is also one very wide application area of capacitive sensors another application again is to measure deformation surface irregularities so this application kinds of overlaps the application area of um, the um, uh, lvdt uh, in part so sorting to assess the measure uh, the presence or absence of part they can be used for vibration measurement as well because we we saw this capacitive sensors can be used for dynamic measurement uh, and they are definitely have a wider application when it comes to dynamic measurement compared to lvdts so one one thing i always recommend is you look up how these sensors are actually uh, available in the market how they look like how how they packaged um so a good google image view gives us an idea regarding how these sensors are available and sold by manufacturers so this gives you the different ways in which these sensors are manufactured and sold um references for this particular session i have referred mechatronics handbook by bishop i have referred shetty and kolk mechatronic system design and introduction to mechatronics by bolton uh, along with these textbook i recommend that you visit the websites of top manufacturers one of them is physics instrument another website which i have referred to is from line instruments which makes um capacitive sensors the, the uh, website i i found this website to be very informative uh with good explanation regarding principles of operations applications features etc so i definitely recommend that you look up 
these websites um, um, apart from the general reading that he will be doing via the textbooks. Thank you very much.